There is so much more for us to learn. If you want to learn some modern applications of derivatives to optimization, to data science, to other fields, then the first thing you're going to want to do is to learn some more linear algebra and especially some eigenvalues. Let's take a peek at some applications to optimization beyond what we've done. We've seen Lagrange multipliers, we've seen that method for constrained optimization, but what happens when you have multiple constraints? Now you can formulate this in terms of gradients, but the geometry is a little less clear. It's better to just jump to the linear algebra. Let's say we have a function f, n inputs, one output, and we need to optimize it while satisfying the constraints, the multiple constraints, that g of x equals zero. For g, a function with n inputs and m outputs. That means we have m constraints, g1, g2, all the way up through gm, and they all have to be zero. Now, it's no longer obvious how to argue based on this has to be tangent to that, or this has to be perpendicular to that. So what we're going to do is use the idea that was alluded to earlier, that the solutions to the constrained optimization problem are those of the unconstrained problem with more variables. In this case, one for each constraint. We're going to define the Lagrangian, L that goes from r n plus m to the reals, that has x variables and lambda variables as inputs, where there are m Lagrange multipliers. Lambda is a vector of m variables, and this Lagrangian L is simply f minus lambda dot g. Or if you like, you can write that in terms of the transpose. Now we need to find the critical points of this Lagrangian capital L. Now, how do we do that? Oh, well, that's simple. We just take the derivative and set it equal to zero. But now our function L has two types of inputs. It has the x variables and the lambda variables. Let's say the x variables come first. So we take the partials with respect to the x variables. That gives us the derivative of f minus lambda transpose times the derivative of g. Okay, that's the, the first part of the derivative of L. For the second part, we need to take the partials with respect to the lambda variables. That gives us simply minus g because f does not depend on lambda, g does not depend on lambda. You've only got that lambda dot g. Okay, uh, now we set that equal to zero. That gives us two sets of equations. The first being that df is lambda dot dg, and the second being that g equals zero, the constraint is satisfied. These are the Lagrange multiplier equations that you can find in other texts. But wait a minute, where are the eigenvalues? Well, these crop up when you classify critical points into Max's min's saddles. We did kind of a hack in 2D, but if you learn eigenvalues, then everything is clear. In the unconstrained case of optimizing f, the eigenvalues of the second derivative determine everything. So that second derivative, that Hessian, is an n by n matrix with n eigenvalues. These are all going to be real since the Hessian is always a symmetric matrix. So what do the eigenvalues tell us about critical points? Well, if all the eigenvalues of the Hessian are positive, then we have a local min. If all the eigenvalues of the Hessian are negative, then we have a local max. And having a mixture, some positive, some negative, that gives precisely a saddle point. But different types of saddle points in higher dimensions now, if some of the eigenvalues are zero, you have a degenerate critical point. There's maybe not enough information to say for sure. You need to do a bit more work. Now, that's the unconstrained case. What about the constrained setting? Well, here you use, not surprisingly, the eigenvalues of the Hessian of L, the Lagrangian, but it's not so simple. You have to be a little bit careful and Oh, I'm afraid I'm not going to have enough time to explain all the technicalities.